Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com. You asked and we're finally giving in, yep. Today we're making Carnival Cruise Line's warm chocolate melting cake. We've been experimenting, sampling, trying a few different techniques and we finally feel that we have hit the perfect, perfect variation on the recipe, so we're excited to present it to you today. Today's video from the kitchen is brought to you by our friends at CruiseLine.com where you can find reviews, tips, and photos from real everyday cruisers. You can also check out their couch cruising series. We've got a link to their website in the description below. So who is ready to make dessert? You guys, this recipe is so easy. I'm not a baker. I'm not a baker at all. I mean, I am the kind of person who, if you told me to make a loaf of bread, I'd get scared and panicky and hide in the corner because it just sounds it sounds really scary, but this recipe is so simple. So we're gonna dive right in and tell you how to do it. You'll see that I have my, my trusty new Cuisinart countertop burner out here. And what we've done is we've just started melting six ounces of butter. And in a moment, we're gonna add six ounces of chocolate. But I just realized, hi Junior, that I forgot to apron up. So we're gonna apron up right now because I like to wipe my hands on an apron every so often. Here we go. And, almost ready, my microphone's kind of getting in the way there. Oh yeah, I can feel it back there. All right, here we go everybody. So, what we've done is we've created like a little pseudo double boiler here by pouring a little bit of water into a shallow uh, little saute pan and we have a saucepan inside of it. So the water is sort of protecting it from scalding. It works really, really well. When we've done this before, it worked great. But I will tell you, you can simply melt the dark chocolate and the butter in the microwave. It's really okay, it will work, it'll be fine, but I like doing it this way. So the first step in this um, recipe is to melt six ounces of dark chocolate and six ounces of butter over the little double boiler here. So I'm gonna pour that chocolate in. Now I wanna show you what type of chocolate that I'm using. This is a very forgiving recipe. As long as you use dark or semi-sweet chocolate, you'll be fine. I use these Ghirardelli chocolate chips that I found at Target. They're called Grand Chips and they're semi-sweet. Now, I think they come out to be pretty dark. I think the flavor is actually more dark than it is semi-sweet. So you'll be okay if you choose a semi-sweet chip, no problem. So that's step one. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a gentle little stir. I have my little um, Cuisinart burner here just on one. I don't want it to melt too quickly and I definitely don't want it to burn. So we're gonna give that a little stir. And in the meantime, I have preheated my oven to 390. As with all of our cooking shows, we will put the recipes down in the description for all of you, a link to our website with the recipe so you can follow along. Um, normally, I'm a little bit more arbitrary <laughs> with my recipes in terms of like, I'm a dump cook and I don't mind not measuring, but this recipe, you have to pretty much stick to every ingredient to the ounce because it's kind of a souffle. So the way that the um, the way that the souffle will rise kind of depends on you know the proportion of the sugar and the flour and the eggs and all that stuff. So while that is continuing to do its thing over here, and I just realized I don't have anywhere to put my spatula, so I'm going to pop it over here. I am going to start whisking the eggs and pop the sugar in while I keep a really close eye on that. In fact, I'm gonna turn that down as low as it can possibly go so that it doesn't overheat. Now, you don't want to use beaters with this recipe. We've tried it. It introduces too much air into the recipe, so just use a little hand whisk. Trust me on this. You could try to put it in a stand mixer on a really low heat, but I wouldn't even recommend doing that. I would just go ahead and use your little hand whisk. So once you've got the eggs nicely um, beaten up a little bit, you add your sugar. So we're using four eggs. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that. And this is three ounces of sugar. I'm using super fine baking sugar. I don't know if it makes a difference, but that's what I used the last time and this recipe turned out so perfectly that I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and get some regular granulated sugar. I just feel like it's probably fine the way it is. I'm actually gonna give that chocolate another stir real quick because we definitely don't want that to burn. And I'm gonna turn off the heat. We definitely don't want this one to get too watery. So right now, you can see it's kind of like a pancake batter consistency. Looks like the chocolate chips are still kind of melting down. The butter's still kind of melting down. 
and give it just another moment because I see a big old chunk of butter still floating in there while I work these eggs and the sugar together. But we're gonna go ahead, here's what it says. It says, mix the eggs and sugar and whisk for a few minutes, then add the flour. So we'll give that just a little bit more time. But again, I don't wanna to introduce too much air, so I'm not whipping it, I'm just kind of whisking it, if that makes sense. Just wanna make sure that the sugar gets dissolved, it's kind of the key here. And now I think we're ready to add our flour. Let me give that a quick stir. Okay, it's looking good, it's looking good. Oh, you guys, this recipe is so incredibly tasty too. I cannot wait until you see it. Um, we did a little test run on it last week and it's identical. Isn't it guys? It's identical, right? Identical to Carnival's Warm Chocolate Melting Cake. I couldn't believe it, I was shocked. I thought for sure that it would have to be just a little tiny bit different. It's not, you bite into it and my husband was like, it's exactly the same. Okay, so this is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and just take the chocolate off the burner there and allow it to sit for just a moment. Turn the burner off, there we go. And now we're gonna whisk in the flour. We are using two ounces of flour. Now, I gotta tell you guys that my eggs this time, I don't know if you noticed this in the bowl in the beginning, but the eggs that I bought were huge. They were enormous. They were like jumbo eggs. So what I did, because I think the recipe calls for more of a normal size egg, I added one ounce more flour and just a tiny bit more dark chocolate just to make sure that it's not too runny. I think the flour was key, like going with one more ounce of flour was pretty key. Um, and then the chocolate ratio, I just figured we, you know, we want the, the right flavor. I don't want it to be too eggy or too souffle-ish. So I figured I'd add a little bit more of the chocolate. So I'm just trying to get the little lumps of flour out. You don't really have to over mix this. Pretty soon we are going to um, add the chocolate in and then pour it in the ramekins. You'll notice behind me, let me see if you can see this here. I'm gonna go step over this way just a little bit. You'll notice behind me that I have four ramekins. I just use cooking spray in those to butter them and they're sitting on a cookie sheet. We're actually gonna be pouring water into the cookie sheet so that they don't get burned. And then we're gonna cook them for 14 to 19 minutes. You gotta watch them like a hawk though, because it's really easy to overcook them. And with this recipe, if you've ever had the warm chocolate melting cake, you know that you want the outside, you want it to be kind of cooked, but the inside has to be gooey. It has to still be gooey. That's the way that it works, kind of fudgy. Last time we did it 390 degrees for about 19 minutes. So usually it's more than 14 minutes, but definitely start checking it at that point. All right, so I'm gonna recap the recipe with you really quickly. So far we've melted six ounces of dark chocolate with six ounces of butter. We whipped up four eggs, we added three ounces of sugar, and then we added two ounces of flour. I added a teeny tiny bit more because my eggs were so eggy. And um, the next step, is to pour these into a grease mold after we mix the chocolate in and bake them in a 390 degree oven. So it is now time, friends. Let's add our chocolate mixture. I'm gonna give that one more stir before we, whip, uh, we mix it in and we kind of fold it in. And then we're just gonna gently mix it into the egg mixture. It's really easy to do. I'm telling you, I am really afraid of cooking things like this that are complicated. The idea of a souffle is terrifying to me. It's so easy. Okay, so I'm gonna pour in what I can and kind of slowly whisk. It's really pretty too. I love the swirly look. So cool. Junior cannot wait to eat this stuff. Now you guys know you have to serve it with vanilla ice cream, right? But there's another cruise secret. And that is that if you're a hardcore carnival cruiser, you order it not only with vanilla ice cream, but do you already know, viewers? You're, you already know, don't you? You order it with a little bit of peanut butter on the side. And all of those carnival servers know that if someone asks for peanut butter, it's, it's like a cold carnival thing. It's really cool. Okay, this is looking beautiful. So this makes four servings. Um, you, you fill the ramekins up pretty high. I got my ramekins over at... Um, got a little something floating in my in my uh, batter here guys oh you know what I think it is I think it's the um, I think it's the butter 
the, a little piece of skin from the butter. And when I say skin, see what I mean about wiping my hands on this? I'm talking about the, um, the wrapper of the butter I think was in the mixture. So we got rid of that. We're never perfect here at Chris Tips TV. <laughs> Let's get the rest of this chocolate in there. You gotta scoop every luscious ounce of that yummy butter and chocolate mixture in. So good, oh, the smell already. Oh, it's magical, I love it. Okay, let's give it another stir. I can see that there's a little bit of eggs and flour on the bottom of the pan, so I'm just gonna kinda incorporate it in a bit more. This is a really good recipe too for people who are kind of beginner dessert cooks. Um, it's pretty forgiving as long as you don't overcook it or mess up the quantities, you're fine. And it's also just really important to remember to put the ramekins in the water bath, which is what we are about to do. So I'm gonna move that over there and I'm going to bring my ramekins over and show you how it's done. Okay, oven is completely heated up. And now we are going to pour some water into the base of this pan, not a whole lot, or it makes it very difficult to remove the pan from the oven because um, you'll have sort of, you know, water sloshing all over the place. So again, I've already greased these little guys and we're just going to, as evenly as possible, pour in the batter to the, pour, the four ramekins. And we're gonna, again, we're gonna fill it up pretty high. I'm gonna use my spatula to guide the way and here we go. Okay, I did it as evenly as I could, and this is about as full as I think that they should be. So we're gonna go ahead and pop these in the oven, give them 15 minutes or so, and come right back to show you what we're gonna do with them when we take them out of the oven. Okay, you guys, remember how I said you really need to watch the oven? They cooked fully in 14 minutes. Last time they took 19 minutes. And the funny thing is this time um, I had more batter in them. So you just have to really watch them. Make sure that you check them at 13 or 14 minutes. Okay, so as you can see this little guy right here, he turned out a little bit more jiggly in the center, kind of has that more gooey warm chocolate melting cake look and the rest are a little bit more souffle like. I can tell these are gooey and they're wiggling a little but this one's a little more set up. So anyway, really excited to dig in and give them a taste. Um, a couple of notes about the recipe. Uh, the water bath in the oven is really important because you don't want them to burn. It helps them to kind of cook evenly. Um, if you're at a higher elevation, make sure that you check your temperature of your oven. All that good stuff is super important. But now it's time to, to adorn them with our favorite things and give them a taste. Are you gonna wanna taste one, Junior? Okay, sounds really good. Uh, by the way, I got the ramekins at Home Goods. They were $7. I had been trying to find a set on Amazon, but they were like a set of eight, and I don't need eight. I just needed four or six, and we don't have a very big house. So <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't wanna get this giant set. So I found these four, they're really cute. I'll try to link to something kind of similar. So it's time to put our little decorations on everything. I'm just gonna kind of gently put a little bit of powdered sugar on top. I know this is not the fancy way to do it. I know that you're supposed to use one of those little sifter thingies, but I'm just not a fancy cook. So we're just going to put a little bit of powdered sugar with a spoon. Oh, they're so cute, so pretty. Okay, and now I of course had to get out some peanut butter to try them with. And we have this wonderful Haagen-Dazs vanilla ice cream that we're going to put on top. So when you, um, when you get this dessert on Carnival, they always serve it with the ice cream in a little dish on the side. So we'll have it just like that and then we'll give it a taste. I think I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try. Really wanna take a photo of it first, but I've gotta try it for research purposes, right? Do you wanna taste it too? I'll get one ready for you. So let's just have a little tiny bit of ice cream here Oh, I cannot wait. This is gonna be so good. And let me show you guys how ooey gooey and perfect that is right there. Oh my goodness.
making sure there's no chocolate on my teeth, just like Carnival. Absolute perfection. The next bite, I'm gonna try it with some peanut butter. Thank you so much for watching. Junior's like, mom, give me some of that right now. Tell us in the comments below what some of your favorite cruise desserts are and maybe give us some ideas of things you'd like to see us cook. Now remember, nothing too crazy and complex because I'm not like a super advanced cook. Thank you all so much for tuning in for this Comfort Cooking with Sherry episode. And until next time, we will see you on the high seas.